Something that has absolutely exploded in the past few years is van life or car life. I have personal experience in this. I did this for several years and I chose a vehicle that ended up working beautifully for me and what I wanted to do. So stay tuned as I will be revealing that shortly. As the economic climate has shifted, people have looked to viable housing alternatives to save money on soaring rent and housing prices. That's understandable. Now, living in your car can actually be an exciting adventure. If done right, if done safely, there's no reason why you can't have a good life doing this. If you are a student or a working professional, there's no reason why you shouldn't consider car or van life as a practical solution to save money on rent. It's only natural. Now, this advice that I'm going to offer is from personal experience. I did this in Southern California as a working professional. It worked. I was comfortable. I was well rested. I was healthy. And it was actually cool and a lot of fun. Not to mention the thousands I saved on rent, utilities, etc. On top of that, I got to travel the country and see and do a lot of really interesting things. So there is, of course, a lot of really good information, advice, tips and tricks, things that I would definitely do again, things that I would change. But there is out of all of that one piece of advice that I would recommend to anybody. It's the number one first place to start. And that's at the beginning, which is usually the best place. Now, you can certainly walk outside to your 1982 Honda Accord sedan if they were making Accords in 82, I think they were, and get in the driver's seat, recline it back, and go to sleep. And there you go, you're living in your car. But that is not a long-term solution to, again, be the safest and most comfortable that you can be so that you can continue your life as you're doing it now. Get up, go to class in the morning, go to your job, go to the office. That just isn't the best way to do all this. Now, the first decision that I made doing this, I didn't realize at first how beneficial this was going to be. This was part of a theme that I saw happen day after day and night after night, being in the city, living in my car. Now, admittedly, this theme refers mostly for the city or urban areas. Of course, out in the country, you can get away with a different vehicle, but what I'm talking about has much less to do with safety issues and something else I saw happening over and over. And this just goes with the natural course of life. You don't know what you don't know until you experience something, right? But this one decision was the thing that ended up making this experience the best that it could have been. And it went from being what could have been totally miserable to something that gave me a lot of interesting memories and a really cool life adventure to look back on. And that is the vehicle that you choose to live in. Now, I know the culture is to get these larger vans like the Dodge Promaster or the Ford Transit vans, the larger vans, or the Chevy full-size vans, for example. But those are not the best vehicles, and there are several reasons for that. The vehicle that I recommend in general is a minivan. This would include the Toyota Sienna or Nissan Quest, specifically the one that I lived in for several years that worked, was comfortable, and made this the best it could have been was, drum roll, the Ford Transit Connect passenger version, not the cargo. I did not build this van out. I basically took the rear seats out, slapped a mattress back there, and good to go. And it was fine. It worked great. This is definitely not the $60,000 van build, curated Instagram life, taking photos on the rim of the Grand Canyon, although I did that. This was more of the practical, quick and easy, fairly cheap, simple way to go. And it was great. It worked great. Now, of course, I have a ton of photos and we can get into that in later videos as well. So I just thought you guys would more enjoy some fancy stock images and hip hop beats instead of looking at all of my photos for now. Just wanted to do a quick introductory video. 
Now, a lot of you might be screaming at your phone or the laptop, how can I be comfortable in a minivan? That's ridiculous. I can't stand up in it. What are you talking about? But there is again this theme that you will discover when this becomes a part of your daily life. You want it to be like when you were living in an apartment. You want to come home, have some food, relax, and just conduct life as normal. Now, I am empathetic to the fact that some folks may move directly into whatever vehicle that they have out of necessity. And I get it. You, you can't always have the convenience to choose exactly what your life situation is, uh, especially in the case of car or van life or the best vehicle to live in. That, that isn't always going to be the case. If you have a personal emergency or something and you just have to move into your car. So you have to make whatever works at the time. But if you can manage it, and this is something that you're planning towards, and you can make these preparations, then this is what I recommend for several reasons, and I can definitely get into that in future videos. Now, there is so much information. I could go on for hours about my experiences, some really cool stories and advice, but I didn't want this video to be three hours long. So if this is something that you guys enjoy, I can do some more videos, talk about this some more, some more tips and tricks to help everybody out, anyone who's considering doing this. But any basic minivan is definitely the way to go. For me, it was the Ford Transit Connect passenger van, not the cargo. And there's reasons for that. So there you go, guys. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.